spomelek tzedak. Boruak Elohim. Y 
Get your scriptures out. Get your sephers out. Get your strongs out. And your lexicons. This one is by Jeff Benner, a dear brother, and one that has unlocked to help so many others, along with Teddy Wilson and others that are filled with the rule and teach his word. We are to be his emissaries. Even when the, the rocks, we are to be unhewn stones, not chiseled and not brick. We are his house, his dwelling place, his habitation, his sukkah, for the word became flesh and dwelt, tabernacled among us. So his ruach, you must ask into your heart. And when he comes into your heart, the ruach of Melech Zadok, the king of righteousness, sin, seems not near impossible anymore, for it is His strength and His righteousness. He didn't put away an end to the Torah. He didn't put away the end of the law. He was sinless and obeyed it perfectly. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Joy to the world, for Yahweh has come. Let earth receive her king. And there's very little joy in that. If we don't know the King of Righteousness, the Melech Zadok, and listen for his voice, whether it be through the shofar, whether it be through the voices of little birdies, or through his word, the scriptures, and not in a perverted form of a babbling Bibles that change every proper noun. It is the name above all names that I speak of, Yahuwah, yud heh vav Yahuwah, and His Messiah, Shua, Yahshua, Yahushua. He is the seed of righteousness that came from, through the perversion that happened in the garden that set all of mankind into slavery to the Nahash, Hasatan. And he is the deity of the nations, DBA or alias G-O-D. Do not call upon the names of any other mighty ones. If there is one sin that is unpardonable, and you Christians will agree with this, the word says the only sin that is an abomination, that they, they every single one is needed. And if you break one, you've broken them all. If the Messiah was our example, 
and he was sinless. We are to walk that righteous path, that narrow, straight path that leads to righteousness that few find. And I thank you for being on that path with me today, as opposed to the broad road that leads to destruction. The Messiah in Revelation says, come out of her, come out of her, my I'm going to turn, and we're going to read just a few sentences in the end of the book, in the book of Hassan that was written by Yohanan, as an old man who survived being boiled in oil by those pagan sons of that believed in other names and rejected the name of Yahweh and the name of his son, the Messiah, Yahoshua. And there is no other name under heaven and earth which men might be saved than that of Yahoshua. Yohanan, who wrote this, was with Kepha, whose name was changed to Peter, to a old man that was lame from birth. And the, the man at the Jaffa Gate, at the Hekel, the, the Bet Yahweh, he must have been passed by the Messiah 30 years or more. It says that he had sat there for 30 years. This was one year after they crucified the Messiah. And Kepha says, silver and gold I have not, but what I have in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, get up and walk. And his legs were made straight. And he danced and pranced and sang and Baruch praised Yahweh in the midst of the temple with all of the Moedim goers from all over the world. They're mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 2. So in front of the Sanhedrin four days later, Yo Yohanan and Kepha, Kepha spoke to the Sanhedrin and said, there is no other name under heaven and earth which men might be saved than that of Yahoshua. The Pharisees forbid them to speak in that name, and since then his name was changed, it was perverted, it was maligned. The Messiah warned that there shall be a counterfeit. All of the, the disciples, the Talmudim, the taught ones, all of the Nabi, the prophets of the Tanakh, and Moshe himself all warned that if you do not keep my commandments, there will be a curse upon you, a multitude of curses. But blessed is the man that reads, hears, and obeys my word. And if any come saying that you can break away a commandment, say, oh, well, we can change the day. And now the first day, Sol Invictus Sunday, is the day of worship. Eh, wrong. That is a covenant breaker. That is all explained in chapter 20 and 19 of Revelation particularly because the whole world is under this dragon, beast, and false prophet system. Come out of her. Come out of Babylon. Now we started out with a joyful song of Simcha Aretz, joy to the world. Let's read chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, Chazan, written by Yohanan, the beloved of the Messiah who put his head and listened to the heartbeat of the Mashiach. And I saw a renewed heaven, Shamaim, and a renewed earth, Eretz, as it is spoken of in Yishiyahu 65.17. For the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I, Yohanan, saw the set-apart Kodesh city, 
the renewed Yerushalayim coming down out of the heavens from Elohim, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's us. And I heard a loud voice from the heaven saying, See, the booth of Elohim, the Sukkot, is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. Just as it was spoken by Moshe in Vayakra, chapter 26, 11 and 12. And Elohim shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more mourning, nor crying, and there shall be no more pain. The former matters have passed away, and he who is sitting on the throne, ouch, that's not me by the way, he that's sitting on the throne said, see I make all matters new, and he said to me, write these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am at Aleph and the Tower, the first and the last, the beginning to the end. To the one who thirsts, I shall give of the fountain of waters of life without payment. Bayam Hayam. Free. The one who overcomes shall inherit all of this, and I shall be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. But as for the cowardly and the unjust, and the, the unworthy, and the abominable, and the murderers, and those who whore, and drug sorcery, and idolatry, and all the faults, their past is in the lake which burns with the fire of sulfur, which is the second death. And one of the seven Melachim, the messengers who held the seven bulls filled with the seven last plagues, came to me and spoke with me, saying, Bo, come, and I shall show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Ruach, the spirit, to a great mountain, and showed me the great city, the set-apart Yerushalayim, descending out of the heavens of Elohim, having the esteem of Elohim, and her light, her Shekinah, was like the most precious stone like jasper stone, clear as crystal, and having a great high wall, having twelve gates, and the gates, twelve messengers, and the names written on them, which are those of the twelve tribes of the children of Yisrael. We need to go to that gate. He is the path of righteousness. He is the gate, and the, the password to go through that gate, when we get there, is Yahoshua of Yahweh. Yahshua, his servant, that paid the price of all of the transgressions that men do in ignorance. Yeah, his name has been removed, so his name is not blasphemed by a wicked and adulterous generation that have left their first love, Yahweh, and are in the actually caught in the actual act of adultery with Baal, with the Lord.
That's the reason that the Messiah came in the first place, and that is the reason that he is retain, re, returning as the Melech Zadok, the king of righteousness. When Caiaphas rent his garment there in front of Yehoshua, and then called the Messiah a blasphemer, by doing so, Caiaphas, ripping or renting his talit, his priestly garment, that rip, ripping, the rendering, cut the Levitical priesthood, and there stood the Melech Zadok in front of the people of Israel. He was the, the priest, the Gadol, the Gadol, Hagadol of the Melech Zadok. He was the king of righteousness, and he paid the price. And we, this generation, have rejected him because we think our sins are forgiven, we're saved by grace. Well, as Yochanan said earlier in his life, a year after the Messiah was crucified, murdered on our behalf, the same as, as Abel, the son of Adam, who was killed by Cain. The, the violence, the whitewashed tombs, you do the root studies in our strongs, which we'll get to later, and you will see the counterfeit. And we'll point the counterfeit out so you can see the truth, the Messiah, and that you can teach others. We need to stay in the Word, in the Torah, not getting sidetracked. We need to get into our Strong's. Find the King James Word Concordance. Go into your Strong's. Find the Greek Word. You read the fluffy abstract definitions of the Greeks, and then you follow those numbers back to the Hebrew Strong's, and you find the fluffy definitions that Strong applied to those. And then, going to the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, of the, the scriptures, and finding out what those words really mean in the concrete meanings and the abstracts. All of our definitions are made up, and most of all of religion is just flat backwards. They read it from right to left instead of left to right. The, the, the word here reads from right to left. English is from left to right. We're backwards. The languages have been confused. Babel, confusion. That was because of the judgment. Instead of going out and populating and multiplying exceedingly upon the earth and following Yahweh, they gathered in one place and started building up. They were never commanded to do that. That was not the plan. Mankind and Nimrod, which when you look at religions go all the way back to that time and even before. Of course, there were lots of perversions. We won't get into that because we're not allowed to go into the book of Hanuk or Yasher or Ubelis, Ubelim. We will stick to the Torah and we will study that out because that is what we are judged on. How we apply His Word to our life. And if we can't understand His Word, are confused, we don't hear that Paleo-Hebrew, the phonetic, Baruch Hashem, Yahweh, Yahshua, Hamashiach, Shem Kevod, blessed be Him. It's an automatic thing with those with the Ruach. We know His words. As we study our scriptures and we know those words, we, we can start translating them phonetically to find
find out what that new tongue that he will be restoring, the Kodesh Lachash, the, the Kodesh tongue, as it was spoken of in the book of Acts. It wasn't babbling. It was that original tongue that all of them understood. This is important. The words, his words, for he is the Devarim. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, Yahweh. Bo Ruach Elohim, Melech Zedak. Hear and obey. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!